So Netherlands, Argentina, this is the quarterfinals of the World Cup, a matchup of you know, traditional heavyweights in, in international football. And this this game actually was like probably the most insane game barring the final. And that says a lot about this because the final was just out of this world. But uh, the the majority of the you know like fireworks and excitement and anxiety of this game happens in the second half, the, the latter portion of the second half. This is in the first half. This is the first goal scored by Argentina, and I think it's worth going back to to take a look at this because it really. I mean, it's it's a pretty special goal. I think it's not the most spectacular goal, but I think when you look at the 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 finer elements of how this goal is constructed it really gives you a lot to appreciate about the people who make it happen and specifically Messi and you know, people said much more glowing words about Messi than I can ever provide but the point being you know like it's worth looking at so I'm gonna let this goal play through once and then we'll go back and take a look at how this actually happens he's a he plays fullback for Simeone at at Lady so. He basically running a second nature to him is what I'm trying to say. So he can run for days and he's really quick too. So Argentina has him running down the right flank, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna cut inside, come around daily blend, as you'll see in a second. Comes around. Okay, now let's stop here. So Netherlands is playing uh, three at the back, and they're I think it's four or five in midfield. But the point is, uh, defensively, what Netherlands is trying to do here um, is, is going to explain a lot of actually how this goal is scored and what makes it special. Is uh, the Netherlands, because they have more in midfield than they have in defense, this line of defense right here is sort of their key to defending Argentina. What they don't want to do is allow anyone to occupy the spaces behind this initial line of defense. So. What they're going to do is they're going to make that a priority, and uh, that'll that'll play out when it comes to Nathan Ake, who we'll we'll talk about in just a second. So Molina cuts inside, and he's going to lay this ball off to Messi here, and so Messi is being guarded by I think that's Frankie De Jong. The defensive responsibilities here, Netherlands handles pretty soundly actually, right? So um, as you see. Just let this play a little bit. So Messi is going to receive the ball, and De Jong is going to be on him. Okay, cool. So yeah, switch. Basically, the ball moves to Messi. Messi receives the ball. De Jong is following him. De Jong is actually still moving to the sideline while Messi is kind of stopped. Messi realizes that there's really no space over here. Um, if he tries to dribble into this area, he's going to be surrounded by three or four defenders and probably just has to pass it back or he'll lose the ball. So Messi's smart enough to know that. By the time he receives this ball, he's already changing directions. Um, so he's not going to go right, he's going to go left. But at the same time, um, Molina, who made that initial run in, right, he's going to stop here, and he's on Nathan Ake. And this is where Ake has to make a decision, and he makes the right decision, if I'm honest. Um, it's a pretty easy decision to make. So he has to decide between, so Messi is now going to move to the left, right? You can already see he's doing that because he has, he's put his foot in the ground. He's switching to his left foot. He's going to start dribbling to his left. Like I said, Netherlands has this line here that they need to defend. So Ake is going to prioritize defending this line against Messi instead of sticking with Molina. Molina is going to slip out into this space. And uh, that's fine because Nathan Ake also knows that Daly Blind is behind him. They're also outnumbering the only forward upfield, which is Julian Alvarez. So this is a sound decision by Nathan Ake. So see, Messi comes on to his left. Okay, so this is pretty much a given. Um, it's maybe the most ubiquitous kind of rule of defending in, in professional football is... Um, the last thing you ever want to do is allow Messi time to run with the ball, especially run at the defense. Um, if, he, if you let him do that, you're, you're basically screwed. The guy's magic. So um, that's exactly what they're trying to do. They don't want to allow Messi to continue 
running into this space right here um, because that's the worst case scenario for for the netherlands because a it's just it's dangerous it's messy running with the ball at your defense but it's also going to signify a breakdown of that line there so what they have to do is they have to curb messi and try to push him to go sideways horizontally across the pitch instead of vertically and nathan ake does exactly that um yeah so he steps up and like I said, he, he's going to allow Molina to slip in behind, and he's going to force Messi to come cut inside. Uh, obviously, you know, with Messi, the threat is never over, but the logical thing to do in this situation, if you're basically any player, right, is uh, you don't have a way forward, so you're going to move inwards, and then you can, you can pass this ball out wide, you can put it to on running, I think that's McAllister. But Netherlands expects this ball is going to get passed, you know, to the other side of the pitch. And keep an eye on Molina. He's making that run there. Okay. So watch what happens here. Okay. So, like I said, Molina is making that run, right? Nathan Ake let him drop off. The responsibility goes to Daily Blind. And Daily Blind is playing on the outside shoulder of um, Molina. Why is he playing on the outside shoulder? Well, for one thing, Molina is quicker. He gets to that point. Um, but also, it's not the most important thing. Because <laughs> in what world is a ball going to get from, from Messi's feet to Molina? This is really where sort of the Messi magic comes into play. Or everyone talks about it. But, I mean, take a look at this, right? Messi is moving horizontally across the pitch. Nathan Ake is basically right up in his business. And Messi manages to thread a ball right through this sliver of space between Van Dyke and Blind into an on-running Molina, okay? And not only that, he actually passes this through Ake's feet. Like, the odds of this happening are quite, quite low. Um, and the audacity and talent of Messi to make it happen, but just... It's it's pretty unbelievable. You know, Van Dyke also, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, Van Dyke is also he's defending Julian Alvarez. And his priority is Alvarez because like everyone on the pitch thinks that the pass to Molina is is a non factor, right? It might be a distraction, like a run to pull someone away and open up another attacking player for more space. Turns out that's actually where Messi decides to go with the ball. Um Van Dyke is a great defender in his own right, so he's going to try and challenge this. I mean, he's got the length, he's strong, but Molina's also really quick. He's got the step on all of them. Look at this pass. Okay. Messi's right foot. Let me go back just a little bit more. Okay. So Messi, like I said, is but it's practically a perpendicular angle. Look at this. His right foot um, is facing the left sideline when he hits this ball his left foot is going to be almost perpendicular to that to be honest i have tried similar passes before in the past um, and i've hurt myself doing this so you know it's it's not an easy thing to do but the thing that really sort of blows my mind about this is the fact that messi hasn't picked his head up in a few seconds since he received the ball so he's using some peripheral vision but Ultimately, what allows him to do this is the fact that he has played long enough. Um, he's he's so well acquainted with how humans move on the pitch, um, you know, where people are, when they're going to be there, how quickly they're moving, um, you know, where the offside line is, all these, you know, different factors that control sort of what his next decision is going to be. He has this in his head. And so he knows, he has the awareness. I think when people say the player has an awareness, they're talking about this kind of a, an action where he's making a decision that he could have made blindfolded. That might be a bit of an exaggeration, but the point is like Messi already knows in his head, he has an idea of where Molina is going to be, where Blind is, where Van Dyke is, where Ake is. And he's going to make a decision based off of that. And uh, he has the 
you know the the skill and the ability to actually make it happen so um, unbelievable goal for Messi great vision great talent and also props to Molina uh, for holding you know continuing with that run if it was me especially if I'd never played with Messi before I would not expect that pass to come my way um, but the fact that Molina does is a credit to Messi and also let's give credit to Molina for for believing him. that was a potential um, through ball and uh, it's a good thing he did because it was a nice goal.